let's learn how to create our very own color correction filters for Snapchat using Lens Studio. All right, so to create our color correction lookup table, we are going to be using a tool called PhotoP. Now, PhotoP, it's all online. So just go to photop.com and it's like a Photoshop clone. It doesn't have as many features as Photoshop, but it has quite a few. So this is what we're going to use. Now, if you're using something like Lightroom or Photoshop, there are actually already some tutorials covering how to create your lookup tables with those. Uh, so links in the description, feel free to check those out. Uh, this tutorial will be using PhotoP. Now, I know the GIMP is a pretty popular image editor as well. It's free, open source. I've used it, I've used it quite a bit, but it does not have adjustment layers. Um, any edits you make, if you want to undo them, you actually have to hit Control Z. Um, with adjustment layers, as we'll see in a minute, you don't have to do that. And so I do not recommend using GIMP to create these uh, color corrections. And just because it's a lot harder to tweak it, um, go back, make changes. So we're going to stick with Photo P. All right, so let's create a new project. And you can give it whatever name. The size doesn't matter at all for the final product, but we're going to load some reference images. I'm going to go 3000 by 1440 and hit create. All right. So this is great, but we don't have any kind of reference to know what our adjustments are going to look like. So I'm going to come up to file, open and place. Now what I've already done is I took a couple selfies uh, with the Snapchat camera. And then I also found these other uh, images here. So the reason I'm doing this is because if you go somewhere like Pixabay, there are lots of free images or Unsplash or Pexels or other similar websites. But most of these photos are taken on professional cameras and have been edited by a professional. And we don't want to be applying our color corrections to photos like these, especially if they've already been edited, because our lens is going to be used inside Snapchat. So we want to make sure we're recreating that environment as closely as possible. So open up Snapchat, take a few selfies without any filters. Um, and then if you still need some more images, which I recommend getting some different lighting conditions, different skin tones, go to kaggle.com, K-A-G-G-L-E.com. Now again, any website I mentioned, I'll put the link in the description. Go to data sets, search for selfie. I'll scroll down, find selfies. Now Kaggle, it's a website for machine learning competitions and machine learning needs a lot of data. So there are some pretty good data sets here. So if this ever loads, you'll see that there are some selfie images here. All right, so now I finally got the selfies to load. So you can scroll through, find some, you can right click, save image as, and you just might need to click load more a few times to find some good selfies. All right, so let's come back to photo P. So I have a couple selfies of myself um, and then a few that I grabbed from Kaggle. So I'm going to use the move tool. Make sure transform controls is checked so that I have these little handles to resize. And then I'm going to select each layer over here and I'm just going to arrange them so I can see everything going on. Now this is just for reference. Uh, so positioning alignment doesn't need to be exact. Now, if you're resizing, hold down the shift key and that'll keep it locked um, as the right aspect ratio. So just kind of lay everything out. So I have um, kind of like an indoor orange tone lighting, a darker environment, darker skin tone. Here I have a, another person with darker skin. And then I also have a very bright blown out background. Now this is just to kind of look at how my color correction will look in different environments. All right, so once you have all your reference selfies loaded in, we also need the base look effect table for Lens Studio. So head to lensstudio.snapchat.com. We're going to go to learn guides, open up 2D and we want post effect. Now you can also search for this as well. 
So uh, the first section we want is this color correction post effect. So just scroll down a little bit and you'll see this base lookup table. So click this and then you can right click uh, save image as or you can copy image come back to photo P and paste. And it is up here. So I'm just holding the alt key on my keyboard and then scrolling to zoom in and out. Uh, so you can see it here. It's a really small image. Just leave it up here in the top left. The color corrections in Lin Studio and how they work is we apply our changes to this base lookup table. And while the lens is running, Snapchat is looking at the image coming in, comparing it to this table, and then transforming the color values to create the output. So we want all our edits to end up on this base lookup table, and that's what we're going to import into Lens Studio. So let's zoom back out and let's get started. Uh, so let's see this layer one. I'm just going to move that to the top. This is that lookup table, and just to stay organized. It's not super important where it is. All right, so let's go ahead and create our effect. Now the color correction um, post effect operates, you can think of it as working on each individual pixel. So we can change the brightness, we can change the hue, we can change anything related to the color. What we cannot do is change things like how sharp the image is or blurriness because sharpening and blurring actually take into account the surrounding pixels. So we can adjust the color, but we can't make our image more blurry. We can't add grain, things like that. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. So how we're going to do this is we're going to add adjustment layers. So over here in this layers panel at the bottom, there's this half filled circle. I'm going to click that and this will show me all the different adjustments I can add. So let's start really simple. Let's just start with black and white. If I add that, you can see I have some sliders here to control how it's doing the conversion. And all my images have gone black and white. If I zoom in, you can see my base lookup table is also black and white. All right, so the adjustment layer will operate on everything below it. So we can check all of our reference images at once and it's being applied to our base lookup table. All right, so I'm just gonna turn that off. And um, yeah, so I'm not an expert at this. So just go through, play with a few different things or look up photo editing tutorials and just figure out what you want to do. So you don't only have to work with the straight up um, adjustment layer as is, because this one that looks kind of weird. Maybe if you want this look, it works. But you can also change the blending mode May let's change it to overlay, and then you can adjust the opacity to change the strength. You can start to get different looks. Uh, starting with something crazy, this yellow, purple, orange, and blue gradient, and now you can get a different look to your photos. So just go ahead and add a few of your effects. All right, so once you've added a few different effects, we are ready to export. Okay, so feel free to delete anything you aren't using um, and just try to clean it up so you have your active adjustment layers and everything else. All right, so if we go up to file, there is an option to export layers, but this is not going to apply our adjustment layers. It'll just export each of these images individually. Now, I haven't been able to find a way to export an individual layer or each layer with the adjustment layers. So we're going to have to add in a few extra steps just for that export. So over here, the layers, select all your adjustment layers and that base uh, lookup table. Don't select any, any of the other ones. Click this folder button. So will just group that all together. Right click your folder, select duplicate layer. So we have all of our adjustments duplicated and you can see it's changed our image. Don't worry. We're going to take care of that right now. Right click that copy, convert to smart object. And now you can see we're back to normal. We have this extra folder one copy. So if you double click on the thumbnail, we actually have a brand new document now, new project. We have our base post effect lookup table and all of our adjustments. And so now we can export this whole thing as an image, but we want to get rid of this transparent space. 
go to image, canvas size, and the base post effect table is 256 pixels wide by 16 tall. And then for anchoring, select this top left. This just means we're gonna resize everything anchored to the top left corner. So if you hit apply, you now have just your lookup table with your effects applied. So if we turn them off, you can see our image changes. We'll make sure everything's on. Go to file, export as, and you want a PNG image. So just go ahead and save that. And we are good to go. Now, before you exit all the way out of PhotoP, and go back to your original project. So we can delete this smart object we created um, because if we have to make any changes, we'll have to recreate it. Now, if you come up to file, uh, there's not an option to save. Uh, PhotoP is free to use. If you want to save your work, you have to pay, you have to upgrade. But we can save as a Photoshop file, a PSD file. So you can export it as that. And then the next time you come to PhotoP, you can open up that file and pick up where you left off. So just make sure you do that so you don't lose your work. And if you need to make changes later, uh, you just come in here, make your adjustments, copy folder one, convert to smart object and export. So it's a little tedious process export, but PhotoP is free, pretty powerful. So we're going to live with it. All right, now let's head into Lens Studio. So in my resources panel, I'm going to just drag and drop that uh, lookup tail that I exported from PhotoP. And in the objects panel, I'm going to add a color correction. And you can really select any of them you want. Um, but Lens Studio does provide this empty one that doesn't have any effects pre-applied. So in this texture, click on that, select the one you imported, and now you have your post effect. And the nice thing about it is this alpha slider you can adjust the strength. So you can apply your post effect just a little bit or apply it all the way. Now, alternatively, you can come up here and you can add inside the post effects menu, a color correction. Now it'll take just a minute. And you can also load in your color lookup texture. And if we switch between the two, they are doing the same exact thing. The difference being this color correction post effect does not have that alpha slider. So I recommend just sticking with the color correction version, not the one from the post effect menu, uh, just so you have this extra slider control. And um, that is all you need to create your own lookup table for Lin Studio and Snapchat.